But some of the things we had to go through, we had personal hygiene, couldn't eat in the restaurant, couldn't go in the bathroom, stuff like that. That was the hard part about it. But just playing the game was great. My name is Luther Luke Atkinson, former Negro League ball player. We're here today with the Negro League display. It's all about Negro League ball players. And it's fitting because they did a lot for history. They did a lot for the civil rights movement because they was doing what Martin Luther King doing. They was playing and taking all the abuse. They said that Negro League ball players wasn't good enough. So as a young boy growing up, I was play, started playing a little league. We didn't have no TV and phone like they do today, so I never did see the major league white major league ball players playing. I used to see these teams when they come through town. So these were my idols, the Negro League ball players, my idols growing up. Then when we finally got a TV, I started seeing the white teams play. So at the time, I was looking to see what they said we couldn't do. I was looking for it then, and I haven't seen it yet, and I'm still looking for it. Hi, my name is Kyle Brown. I'm with um, Black Diamond Limited here today uh, displaying Negro League merchandise. I am a direct descendant of a former Negro League player, and uh, his name was Spotswood Poles. He played for the Harrisburg Colored Giants in Harrisburg, PA. He was a center fielder, and he played from 1906 to 1908. And then he went on to play with the Lincoln Giants in New York City. So that was my dad's uncle. So I'm just proud to be a direct descendant of a Negro League baseball player. Our museum in Owings Mills, Maryland is named after Hubert B. Simmons, who played baseball for the Baltimore Eli Giants in the 50s. I met him many years ago, and he said, Ray, we need to have a museum. And now we are blessed to have a museum, thanks to former county executive Kevin Cameron. We met him in 2013 at the Pikes Donner at a crab feast. This is a politician asking us, do we need any help? So we said we'd like to have a venue to house our artifacts and create a museum. He said, I'm going to take you that to you. Usually when a politician makes promises to you, it goes in one ear and goes out the other. We, we know that. About a month later, he gives us a call back. Are you guys still interested in a museum? Of course we are and we still didn't believe. Then he called us back and said, how would you like to be inside of a library up in Owings Mills? We said, great. So, on March the 27th, 2014, Kevin Kamenetz, myself, Miss Audrey Simmons, Mr. Simmons is deceased, who the museum is named after, the Hubert V. Simmons Museum of Negro League Baseball, we cut the ribbon. And you can go visit the museum at the Baltimore County Orange Mills Public Library seven days a week. As you can see behind me, I have several Negro League jackets. Uh, we have this one commemorating the 20th anniversary, 100th anniversary rather, of the Negro Leagues. And we have a jacket here also commemorating the 100th year anniversary of the Negro Leagues being established. And to my left, we have a table with t-shirts available for different teams, teams that are popular. Some people know about the Kansas City Monarchs and the Homestead Grays, but there are other teams in the league that people may not have heard of, like the Indianapolis Clowns, the Lincoln Giants, you know, the Birmingham Black Barons, those sort of things. So we encourage people to come out and not only peruse, but also gain a history lesson as well. These three women, are the first and only three black women who played baseball in the Negro Leagues. Due to the fact, if you've seen the movie A League of Their Own, they could not play on that team due to the color of their skin. To my far right, this is Mamie Peanut Johnson. And they call the Peanut because she was tiny. And not only that, they also call the Peanut because one day she was pitching against one of the uh, African American players and the batter called her, you're no bigger than a peanut. And that's really how she got that name. In the middle, the better player out of the three is a lady who played in the infield, Tony Stone. She 
with a great infield. And to my far left over here, Connie Morgan played also second base with the Clowns, Indianapolis Clowns team. Also, Hank Aaron played for the Indianapolis Clowns as well. This is Bebop. The Clowns signed him so they could get a walk and get on base because nobody couldn't pitch to him. He was so small, you get a walk, get on base, and then there's somebody to take a run for him. But that's why they own a the Indianapolis Clowns were like the glow trials in basketball. They were good ball players, but they were seventh inning, they would always do something to entertain the fans, like shadow ball. You know, like they would do things like with no ball, they would do the shadow ball and stuff. But that's what the Indianapolis Clowns were. But they were great ball players that played on that team. Made the major league, like Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron played for the Indianapolis Clown. You had the Goose Tatum play for the Indianapolis Clown. You know, like all them, Sweetwater Clifton, all these great ball players play for this great team, the Indianapolis Clown. They turn out some good ball players on that. This is a picture of Charlie Pride, our first black country western singer who not only sung country western, but he also played in the Negro League as a baseball player. He was a pitcher and he played well. He played well enough to become a professional ball player, but I believe the second time his arm got messed up, maybe his rotator cuff on that point. He had no choice but to stop playing, and he continued to sing, and the rest is history. So, the House of David was a team who played back in the day with the Negro League players. They were the only team back then who befriended the Negro League players. They traveled together, they boarded together, they did everything together. When they traveled to a different town, the mayor or someone might say, well, you know, House of David, you can come in to our town, but not the Negro League team. But guess what? The House of David team would say, well, if they can't go, we're not going either. So that was a good thing. So they traveled, they played. Satchel Page did something very unique. Satchel Page left the Negro League team, Kansas City Monarchs, one of the teams, joined the House of David team, pitched for them against the Negro League team. So if you get time, Look up the Hubert B. Simmons Museum of Negro League Baseball and you'll see stories about the House of David along with everybody else. We also have uh, books here that speak to the experiences and the, the hardships that the Negro League ball players went through back in the 1920s all the way up through the integration of the major leagues. This particular one is called Only the Ball Was like White, which speaks to the fact that they were all colored teens back in the days. Um, and it just talks to some of the hardships and discrimination that they went through and the things they had to do regarding travel. A lot of times the ball players had to sleep in cars on their way to different games or sleep in um, persons' houses that welcomed them while they, they barnstormed around the leagues. But some of the things we had to go through, we had personal hygiene, couldn't eat in the restaurant, couldn't go in the bathroom, stuff like that. That was the hard part about it. But just playing the game was great. Yeah, I enjoyed playing the game. Many of you have known about Satchel Page, and this is a book about his story. It's called Satchel, and it talks about his struggles to get into the major leagues. And this particular book talks about um, his frustration at not being the first black player to be called up into the major leagues. And as we all well know, it was Jackie Robinson. And I want to just say this, that Jackie Robinson wasn't the most talented person from the Negro Leagues to go into the major leagues. There were several ball players that were more talented than Jackie, but Jackie had the demeanor that Brant Ricky was looking for to deal with all the racism and the insults and the slurs that he was going to have to endure. I started out, like I said, in the Little League, right on up through high school. Then I signed to play in the independent league. Then I met the great Satchel Page. And he said that when I met him, I played against his team. He said, you're a great ball player, man. I said, I think I can help you get a contract with the Major League because I think you can Major League caliber ball player. He said, if you sign me, he said, I'm showcasing all these young ball players you see I have here. I'm showcasing them to the Major League so the scouts can see them so they can get a contract. He said, I think I can help you if you sign. So I signed for Sat. Started touring around the country with Sat playing baseball which I enjoyed. It was a great man. I My mentor, just watching him play at his age at that time. He was in his late 50s. 
when I signed with him. He was just as good as we were. We 19, 20 year old kids, and he was just as good as we were. So, just playing with him, watching him play, he just say, hey, he gave us great hope that we could, you know, we could make it in the major league. Baseball is universal, and you know, it transcends color. You know, it, it's it's a shame that people were denied the opportunity to play in front of a wider audience uh, just because their skin wasn't the same as those who had the power, you know. And so thankfully that's no longer the case today, but we still got a long way to go. Victory.